what would you say is you, is between the two of you is the biggest disagreement about aliens, uh, alien life out there? Is it uh, from, from the basic framework of thinking about what is life to maybe what aliens look like to alien civilizations to alien, UFO sightings? What would you think? So I would say the biggest one is that um, the emergence of life does not have to be um, that can ha can't just ha happen once on the planet. That it could be two or more life forms present on the planet at once. And I think Sarah doesn't agree with that. I think that's like logically inconsistent. <laughs> that's really polite. <laughs> You're saying it's nonsense, so it, but because you think that yeah. How likely is that? So the idea that what what is what does it look like? Let's imagine. Uh, two alien civilizations coexisting on a planet. What's that look like exactly? So I would say, um, I think I've got to get around your argument. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's say, let's say that on this planet, there's just like, there's lots of available chemistry and one life form gets em em emerges based on carbon and interacts and there's, a, there's an ecosystem based on carbon and there's an orthogonal, hmm. um, uh, and so it's planetary phenomena which is what you, I think, right. right? But there's also one that goes on silicon. And and because there's enough energy and there's enough stuff that these life forms might not actually necessarily compete um, evolutionarily. Yeah, but they would have to not interact at all because they're going to be co-constructing each know, other's causal chains. I think that's where you just got me, yeah. So there's no, so there's no overlap in terms of their causal change or very limited overlap. Yeah, so I think the only way I can get away with that is to say, right, life could emerge on a planet underneath and, uh, okay. The lizard people under the crust of the earth. I think, I think, I think, we let's go to, I, I, I think, so that, but look, as you can see, we disagree. So, yeah. and I think Sarah actually has convinced me because of that, that life is a planetary phenomenon, the emergence of life is a planetary phenomena. And and actually, um, because of the way evolution and selection works, then nothing occurs in isolation. The causal chains interact, so there is a common, there's a consensus model for life on the Earth. But you don't think you can place aliens from elsewhere onto the? Can't you just uh, place multiple alien civilizations on one planet? Right, but I think uh, so. You can take two original life events that were independent and commingle them, but I don't think when you're talking about when you when you look at the interaction of that structure, it's it it's like the same idea as like an experiment being an example of life, right? That's a really abstract and subtle concept. And I guess what I'm saying is life is information propagating through matter. So once you start having things interacting, they in some sense commingle and they become part of the same chain. So oh, there is the really commingling starts quickly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Proceeds, we proceed to commingle quickly. Right, no right. What. So you you could say, so the question is then, the more interesting question is, are there two distinct origins events? And I still think that there's reasons that on a single planet, you would have one origins event because of the time scales of cycling of geochemistry on a planet. And also the fact that I don't think that the origin of life happens in a pool and like radiates outward through evolutionary processes. I think it's a multi-scale phenomenon. It happens at the level of individual molecules interacting, collections mm -hmm. of molecules interacting and entire planetary scale cycles. So life as we know it has always been multi-scale. And there's I'm brilliant examples of individual mutations at the genome level changing global climate, right? So there's a tight coupling between things that happen at, you know, the largest scale of our planetary scale and the smallest scale that life mediates. But it still might be difficult within something you would call as a single civil alien civilization, you know, different, sp their species and stuff. But I think what, yeah. And they can't, might not be able to communicate. But you're asking about life, not species, right? So but what's the difference between a, one living civilization? It's, this is almost like a category question. yeah. yeah versus species because it right. can be very different it, like right. the way so, evolution because there's like island like literally islands that you can involve different kinds of turtles and stuff yeah. and they can so i guess what i'm saying is weird if you look at the ways. structure of two interacting living things populations and you look in their past and they have independent origins for their causal chain, then you would say one was alien, you know, they have different in independent origins events. But if you look at their future by vir virtue of the fact they're interacting, their causal chains have become commingled. So that and then in the future, they 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 are not independent. Um, right. 
right? So that's why you would even define them as alien. So the structure across time is two examples of life become one example of life because life is the entire structure across time. Right. But there could be a lot of variation with this. Yeah, so the question we're all interested in is how many independent origins of a complexifying causal chain are there in the universe? See, but is, is the idea of origin is easy for you to define? Because like, um, well, is, is the, when the two, when the species split in the evolutionary process and you get like a, a dolphin versus a human or Neanderthal versus Homo sapien, that, isn't there? Let me make a distinction here um, quickly. So I think, um, sorry to interrupt. Um, what we're saying, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, Sarah, what we won that argument because she was, I think she's right that, um, once the causal chains interact and going forward, so we're talking about a number of things. Let's go all the way back before origin of life, origin of life on Earth. On Earth, chemistry emerges. There's, so there's all these. I would say there's probably mechanistically the chemistry is desperately trying to find any way to get replicators. The ribosome kind of was really rubbish at the beginning, and they just competed, 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 and you got better and better ribosomes. Suddenly, that was a technology. The ribosome is the technology that way. Boom, allowed evolution to start. So the, what I was trying to, why I interrupted you is say that once evolution has started using that technology, then you can speciate. And I was trying to, and I think what Sarah said was convinced me of, because I was like, no, we can have lots of different chemistry, shadow biosphere on earth. And she's like, no, 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 you have to have this, you have to get to this minimum evolutionary machine. And then when that occurs, speciation occurs. So exactly what you say, dolphins, humans, everything on earth um, but when you're looking at aliens or alien life um there's not going to be two different types of chemistry because they compete they compete and interact and cooperate because the causal chains overlap one might kill the other one might combine with the other and then you go on and then you have this kind of um this average and sure there might be re-speciation it might be you have two ty types of emerging chemistry it almost looks like the origin of life on earth required two different pre-life forms the peptide world and the RNA world, somehow they got together and by combining, you got the ribosome. And that was the minimum competent entity for evolution. And, and go, would all alien civilizations have an evolutionary process on a planet? Mm -hmm. So like that's one of the almost, it's almost the definition of life. Mm -hmm. To create all those memories, you have to have Things something. Have to like, change in time. Yeah. and the, But there has to be selection. Mm -hmm. Um, that's like an efficient, there's no other way to do it. No. I, well, never say never, because soon I say that. That's the oh. part that depresses me, though, going back to like, I don't know, the earlier discussion on violence and things like, and I, I don't know where, I, somebody was tweeting about this recently, but like, you know, how much stuff had to die. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe it was you. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry. So, like, we were, talk we're talking brain. about life. Yeah. And uh, I guess a lot of murder had to occur. Right, so selection death, means things had to be weeded out, right? So yeah. Well, we can celebrate that. Death makes way for to Yeah, life. I mean, it. Is, and also, you know, one of the most interesting features of, of major extinction events in the history of our planet is how much novelty emerged immediately after, right? So, and of course, you know, a lot of people make arguments we wouldn't be here if the dinosaurs didn't go extinct. So um, in some ways, we can attribute our existence to all of that. But I, I guess I was just wondering and sort of like, if I was gonna build a universe myself in the most optimistic way, would I retain that feature? But it does seem to be a universe. I think you have to. I mean, I think we're, I think we're probably being over um, anthropomorphizing. I remember watching uh, the blue, I think it was the blue planet, David Attenborough was showing these seals and because of climate change, some seals were falling off a cliff and how tragic that was. And I was like, I was saying my son, that's pretty cool. Right? Look at look at the, those ones down there. They've obviously got some kind of mutations, some, and they're not doing that daft thing. Yeah. And so that that mm -hmm. that poor gene will be weeded out. Of course, at the individual level, it looks tragic. And of course, as human beings, we have the ability to abstract and we empathize. We don't want to cause suffering on other human beings, and we should retain that. But we shouldn't look back in time and say, you know, how many butterflies had to die? I remember making this. Yeah. How many? If you think about the caterpillar become the chrysalis and then the butterfly getting out, how many, if that suffering, we call it suffering, if that process of pruning had not occurred, 
we have no butterflies. Mm -hmm. So none of the butterfly beauty in the world without all that pruning. So pruning is required, but we shouldn't anthropomorphize and feel sorry for the biological entities because that's that seems to be a backwards way of looking at it. What we should do is project forward and maybe think about what values we have across our species and our ecosystem and our fellow human beings. Yeah. You know, you know, now that we know that animals suffer at some level, think about humane farming. When we find that plants can, in fact, are conscious and can think and have pain, then we'll do um, humane gardening. <laughs> Until that point, we won't, won't do it, right? I like this. Um... Famous chemist endorses the majestic nature of murder. That's, oh, a, that's, the, that's the title. Um, well, I didn't say that, but in any case. Well, I just ins inserted I have it. a hard time with it, though. I think the way, no, the way you sure. put it, it's kind of. But it it's the reality of, it's the reality of, it is beautiful. Um, you know, there's an Instagram account called Nature is Metal. And I, I keep following and unfollowing it because I can't handle it for prolonged periods of time. We evolve together, you die alone. Yeah. We well, evolve together, but you die alone. So I always, You live alone too. It's the Gatsby thing. I don't know. We evolve together. Where's the together? The together is the murder. The population. <laughs> and the sex. The and I just try to like, murder. My, my romantic vision of it to try to make me happy, Sarah, instead of sad, Sarah. Um, I talk in third person when I think very abstractly, sorry. Um, is, um, you know, like like this whole, like, you know, the like certain things can coexist. So the universe is trying to maximize existence. But there's some things that just aren't the most productive, tr productive trajectory together. But it doesn't mean that they don't exist on another timeline or another chain somewhere else. Like, I, like, and maybe you would call that, like, then some kind of multiverse or things. But what am I saying? <laughs> I think you can't. I just, you can't go down I'm a level. I'm just making stuff up. No, you're not. No, feel better. I don't, I don't understand. It is illogical. And we need, we no, need. No, I know, I know. Yeah, if you look at bacteria, if you look at virus, I mean, just, just the number of organisms that are constantly, yeah. like, looking at bacteria, they're just dying nonstop. It's right. like a slaughter. Right. So, well, and this goes back to the conversation about God. I mean, like, there's the whole thing about, like, why does the universe <laughs> enable suffering? Individuals don't exist, right? In, in the, so for this, I think you sh if you think about life as an entity on Earth, right? Let's just, let's just go back a second. I mean, I like to, I'll be ludicrous for a second. I don't exist. You don't exist, right? Um, but, you, but the actions you do, the product of evolution exists, right? The objects you create exist quantitatively in the real world. If you then understand life on Earth or alien life or any life in the universe as this integrated entity where you need you need cells in your body to die. Otherwise, you'd just get really big and you wouldn't be able to walk around, right? So, you, you know, you do. Yeah. 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 So, so, yeah. so, yeah, so I, I think... It's uh, the patterns that persist, not the physical things. And of course, we, you know, we have, we have, we place immense values on fellow human beings. And I'm majest majestic professor does like other individual human beings. Or... Now you're talking in third person too. I know, it happens, right? <laughs> so death, would you say, I mean, because you said evolution is a fundamental part of um, life. So death is a fundamental part of life. Yeah. It might Right now, it might not be in the future. We might hack some aspects of death because, and we'll evolve in different ways. But isn't there, I, I think Sarah mentioned like this life density. Um, is it, Can't that become a problem? Like too much... Too, too too much uh, bureaucracy, too much uh, baggage uh, builds up. Like you need to keep. Re I think erasing it's okay stuff. that we dissipate. I, like I don't think of it like like I mean, dissipate. Yes. <laughs> no, but I mean like like we're so fixated on ourselves as individuals and and agents. And we were talking about this last night actually um, over dinner. But like um, you know, an individual persists for a certain amount of time. But what you want to do, like if you're really concerned with immortality, is not to live indefinitely as an individual, but maximize your causal impact. So like, what are the traces of you that are left? I, and and you're still a real, I, I always think of Einstein, like for a, a period of time, he was a real physical thing we would identify as a human. And now we just see echoes of that human in all of the ways that we talk about his, you know, causal impact or frankly, right, is another great how many, example. How many so much... Easter eggs could you leave in the future? It's like, yeah, oh, I got so... you. <laughs> So I guess the the question is, how much do you want to control the localization of a certain features of, say, a prop a packet of propagating information we might call a person, and keep them localized to a, one individual physical structure? Or do you want to, you know, is there a time when that just becomes a dissipated feature of 
the society that it once existed in. And I'm okay with the dissipated future because I, I just think uh, that makes more room for more creativity in the future. 